Mirror's got a week-long look at the situation of disabled people in Britain this week, uh, with an investigation today into the horrifying number of deaths and suicides linked to benefit sanctions and people being ruled fit to work when they are anything but. Now, Dan, these reforms were first suggested by Labour, but then made much, much more rigorous by Ian Dunning Smith under the Tories. And it says in this story that the DWP has been warned 40 times about life-threatening flaws by academics, coroners, and its own researchers, problems with the system for three decades and done nothing. That's successive governments have got this problem. But there, there does seem to be like a, a massive problem with the public's attitude to disabled people and benefits in this country, which is why we keep voting for governments that promise to crack down rather than help out. Um, and this series that we've got is going to be, it's been conceived by, it's going to be edited, written, photographed by disabled people in an effort to change minds about some of that. It might work for our readers, but is the government planning any reforms of its the way it treats disabled people? Uh, they've had all sorts of kind of green paper, white paper, that sort of thing, but reforms tend to be quite sort of um, incremental grinding, that sort of thing. I think what's being pointed to in this piece by um, John Pring, who is the sort of campaigning editor of the Disability News Service, he's essentially, if, if, if my coverage of DWP is a slight thorn in the DWP side, he's a much bigger one, essentially. He is constantly at them about this issue of people who have died um, when their benefits have been stopped or when they've had problems with the system. Um, and so what he's pointing to is a much bigger culture um, rather than the sort of individual policies, as you say, which was driven by um, the sort of rhetoric against sort of make, making sure there weren't strivers and scroungers, that sort of thing, at the early 2010s, which I think has kind of receded a little bit over the last few years, especially since COVID. We're, we're not seeing that much of that sort of public culture war, if you like, over people, over whether benefit claimants are, you know, bad people, which, of course, you know, they're not. They're just people who've fallen on hard times, people who are disabled, people on low wages, etc. cetera. Um, but what we have seen is kind of the aftershocks and the continuation of some of this policy. And I was kind of pretty, you know, I wasn't to do with the writing of this story, but to see the face of um, Errol Graham uh, staring out at me at the, out of the paper, I covered that case um, as well as John Pring. And it was just absolutely harrowing. It's like one of the worst coroner's reports I've ever read. Um, he was essentially, um, he had severe mental illness. He didn't want to go outside. Uh, the DWP tried to contact him to say, look, mate, we haven't heard from you. We're stopping your ESA benefit. And he um, ceased contact with them. He ceased contact with family. Uh, and he starved to death. He was, he weighed uh, 30 kilograms, uh, sort of five stone when they found him. Uh, the only food in his cupboards was a couple of tins of fish from five years ago. Um, it was it, it, like he was found dead by bailiffs who knocked down his door. Um, and it was just absolutely shocking. And, mm. you know, the DWP said basically you have some people in very difficult situations. And this is me glibly paraphrasing them. But, you know, this sort of thing could always happen and we're doing our best to prevent it. But um, as um, Vince Maple, who I actually I used to uh, cover his uh, stuff because he's a Labour councillor in uh, in uh, Chatham in Kent, where I used to work, he said, this is just, you know, this is what a lot of people say. I've assisted more than 25 appeals and the vast majority win. The system needs urgent review. And that's true. Uh, PIP and ESA, two very different benefits, but both paid to people who are sort of sick, and, sick or disabled. Um, the people who take those cases to tribunal about three quarters of them win their tribunals after they've been denied benefits by the DWP. Now, the DWP always says, you know, a lot of these cases bring new evidence at tribunal or they hear something that wasn't heard in the original case. But there's got to be something going vastly wrong there. And yeah. people have been saying that for many years and yeah. those rates are still stubbornly high. Yeah. Now, Glenn says the DWP forces the disabled people to go to court to be classed as disabled. Um, there is a lot of misunderstanding about disability. People like Errol who die uh, on their own, unseen, unnoticed, uh, mentally ill. You need to remember anyone of us can get to be mentally ill. And if the way our mental health system is in this country, that it can 
drag a lot of people down if you don't get the right help or you don't have the family and support or love around you to try and pick you up after that. Um, and I think as well, we're just not very open about disability. We tend to think that it's someone in a wheelchair and they're all the way over there and they don't work and they don't want to work and they can't work. I know disabled people in wheelchairs who work night shifts, who work very hard. I have a very mild disability of epilepsy, which doesn't affect me day to day anymore, but it has done in the past. It's caused me a lot of problems in the past and it could, in theory, kill me one day if it decided to. And there's not much I can do about it or my neurologist can do about it. But um, I work and I run my own business and I have a family and I try to do lots of other things. And many disabled people, whether they're wearing a stoma bag, whether they've got a heart condition, whether they're mentally ill, They've got other things going on. They are not all scroungers. And I wish, and I'm very glad that we've got this series going on. And I hope that that kind of attitude changes a bit in society because um, we just tend to think that the disabled are a drain. We don't think about how much they produce as well and also what they have to go through. So I'm very glad the mirror's doing that this week. Steve says, is it not the case that people have been sanctioned and unable to claim benefits Throwing up figures and more people back in work when the reality is less people are claiming but actually not working. I think Steve's talking about there about manipulation of the employment and the claimant figures because mm. they've changed the criteria for different things and you know they're saying more people on payrolls and actually it's self-employed people who've had to go PAYE because of different rule changes by the tax man and stuff. Um, the government is quite good at bending the, the figures a bit, aren't they? Uh, well, Boris Johnson has continually he's got a bit better at it now but he kept saying we have the oh god i've got to get this right i think he said we have the highest employment and employment is higher than before covid and what he actually meant was highest payroll employment because uh like you say uh, there's a difference between um kind of payrolls which are don't count a lot of self-employed people and that kind of thing um and employment overall which basically unemployment is is record lows uh i don't want to uh, don't completely quote me on it but you know it's it's pretty much down at the lowest it's it's been for decades um but uh, that masks a few people have sort of fallen out of the labor market and so aren't kind of looking for work and therefore aren't counted as unemployed and the reasons for that a lot of people are still trying to explore um, yeah. i've just gone dark in my face because the laptop has uh, decided to shut down like, i'm worry. still here <laughs> um, yeah they do some people just change and they just drop off the, the system and also got to bear in mind that if you do have a disability sometimes that disability makes it harder for you to fight the system and therefore you're less likely to appeal and you do just drop out leslie says when you're disabled you become invisible and a parcel that can be passed and kicked from pillar to post i've tried to work but each time i'm discriminated against mainly by the dwp which means presumably sometimes, Leslie, it's your employers as well. Insurance to cover me at work is another issue. Thank you for highlighting the reality. It would be nice, wouldn't it, if we just treated everybody like if they wanted a job, have a job until, you know, something all around. Well, two, two fifths of people on universal credit, somewhere around that, have a job. So all this talk about we want to get people off welfare and into work, it's, it's, it's misleading because... Yes, a lot of people who are claiming benefits are not working, but a very, very large, uh, for good reasons sometimes, you know, and right. a very uh, large number of them are working and they're working in such low wage jobs that they're having their wages topped up. And this is a system that's existed for sort of two decades because Gordon Brown brought in tax credits to kind of top up, you know, low wages, which obviously helps people, but then you know, there's almost like an excuse for companies to keep wages low. So that debate has been kind of teased out in the Tory party for a very long time. And, um, yeah. you know, there's still an awful lot of division about it. Yeah. Now, Roxanne, I think your comment's been cut off a bit, but we'll do our best with it. I work with chronic pain. I was diagnosed in August 2020, applied for PIP. I had to drop a job. That was in November the 4th, 2021, and appealed to a tribunal. Um, but people told lots of untruths and you haven't had your diagnoses uh, it looks like passed on so you know that's that's two years that uh, Roxanne's been living with chronic pain it's one of those disabilities that people can't see and therefore they don't necessarily believe it exists um, and then she's had to drop a job despite struggling on with it for more than a year and now she's appealing and that's going on and on and in the meantime heaven knows how much she's managing to pay for herself wouldn't it be nice if we had a government or a party that went into general election that said you know what we're not going to crack down on people we're going to help them out 
Help out, not crack down. That would be good, wouldn't it? There you go, Kia. There's a slogan for you. <laughs>